Brian uh, Nichols was a black gentleman who um, was convicted in Fulton County Court. Uh, he was 33 years old. This was in 2005, and he was on trial for rape. And uh, his name was Brian Nichols, and there's a point to that, and, and this is one of them done in patterns. This is where Wayne Williams was found guilty, and the mechanism, uh, even your your black mayor then, uh, Jackson, uh, Maynard Jackson, and the police commissioner at the time was Lee Brown, who went on to be commissioner at uh, police commissioner several times over at Houston and also the mayor, and went on to be drug czar under the Clintons. Um, now, then I'm leaving out something I was going to say about Lee Brown. Lee and uh, Jackson were on ABC back just before Wayne Williams. I'm going to bring this in because this is the reason. Wayne Williams uh, was um, arrested not long after uh, Lee Brown, police commissioner, and uh, Jackson, Manor Jackson, the mayor at that time, were on ABC Morning Show back then, just prior to his arrest, saying that Wayne didn't do it the killings, it was black children in Atlanta, that it was the mechanism used. Well, that's they didn't say this. They just left it like that, and nobody pursued it. Then Wayne's arrested. He's in prison. Uh, he was convicted of killing two, and the rest of them, there was about 20 killed, I believe, and counting, and it was just forgotten. And I was writing about mind control murders, and I've put all this up, or, or a lot of it up, uh, Larry Flynn of Hustler Magazine was shot by a program shooter while I was doing the book about medical malpractice and mind control. And he was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia, Gwinnett County, near Cobb County, Marietta, where I was where I was doing the book, writing the book and lived. Had a letter from the FBI, ongoing investigation, national security involved. And I end up, I'm not going to tell what happened. It's such a horror story, April Fool Day of 80 and uh, was illegally after, <laughs> I'm not, I can't even tell it, but I ended up being illegally transported across the state line and worked for Fred Simpson, the district attorney, in 1980, passed a background check, and et cetera. Uh, but I wanted to get back to now to Fulton County. Uh, if I can read my own writing here, it's been a while ago. Um, Nichols uh, escaped. He was on trial for rape in 2005 in Fulton County. That's where Wayne Williams was found guilty. And he, they say he went on a killing spree in Fulton County. Oh, uh, let's see. He shot, there was three kill. He shot and killed the uh, Superior Court judge and Sheriff's deputy, Hoyt Tinsley, in Fulton County Courthouse. He shot, and I'm not sure she was the one killed, I thought I had it down here, a deputy, uh, a female deputy. And uh, court stenographer, sheriff's deputy law, something said, suspect fled. Uh, he also went, well, you can look this up. He, uh, you can Google it like I did. I'm, um, anyway, uh, you can Google that. But he also, this is the part I couldn't find, but somebody else could. I'm on a little phone, and it's hard to see. But at the same time, he fled to, I don't know if it's Gwinnett County. It wasn't Cobb County, I don't believe. It may have been, but it was a county outside Fulton, adjacent. Uh, so I'm getting in that area, Marietta, Lawrenceville, that area. Well, he fled there, and he shot a customs officer. Now, this one, all of this can, I mean, they can put it, it's done in patterns deliberately. And it can be proven if you put it up there. And the, there was something about the customs officer that's real important. He was headed 
for Salisbury, North Carolina. And this woman, he he had come to her door and uh, I believe threatened her, but then it ended up they were, this book, I'm not even going to name it, I've forgotten. But anyway, she convinced him not to kill her. And anyway, they caught him and he's tried and uh, he was convicted. Okay, this is mind control murder. Now I want to get to another one. Um, if I can find where I put it, I scribbled it down. Uh, Brian uh, Terry. No, Terry uh, Nichols. Excuse me, Brian Terry. Terry Nichols uh, was the man who was, is in prison in Oklahoma City that was supposed to have helped Timothy McVeigh in the Oklahoma City bombing. I have put up here repeatedly over the last five, six years on YouTube and Facebook about these are mind control murders. Uh, now, Timothy McVeigh was put to death. And he told, and I've put this up because it was, the picture was put in another book. Timothy McVeigh uh, said that the military put a chip up his buttocks. They, what I've been telling is chips can be put in your root canal, in a root canal, heart bypass, uh, anywhere in your body. And so when they're autopsying a brain to see if there's an abnormality like uh, the gentleman in... Uh, Las Vegas that did the mass shootings, they should look and see if he has a chip in him because I'm sure they'd find it when they do the autopsy. Um, now then, because uh, these that I've talked about have been deliberately done in patterns. They can be proven. But number one, let me say this about James Holmes. Uh, he is in prison on death row, I believe, if he's not still in the mental hospital. So it's kind of infuriating when I have spent so much time simply because I cared uh, in telling about this and being called every name in the book and trying to get people to listen. I got nothing out of this part of it. The part is that and if I'm skipping around, bear with me. I'm doing this from memory, and I don't uh, have, and I'm not saying anything against Megyn Kelly on NBC. And by the way, the people who kidnapped me, this is another part of it. I found out after I was flown out at Mr. Flint's, who was uh, shot by mind control, who they are victims. This is the point I'm trying to make, and people don't like to hear it. The uh, person who did the Virginia Tech mash shootings here some years ago uh, turned around and shot himself the student he was programmed it's the persons doing the program he's a puppet they're a puppet he didn't choose to do that any more than Brian Nichols or um, Terry Nichols or Timothy McVeigh or Oklahoma uh, well okay um Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes. The thing that makes it even worse is these people are put in jail for maybe life, like Scott Peterson, um, or they're treated for mental illness, which is a horrible, horrible injustice. Do you think society wants to know it unless it was put up on network television and the very people that got into kidnapping me and taking down my dad, and I found out about it in 1983 after I was out at Larry Flint's in a political campaign, and he had flown me out there in part because I knew about his shooting, that it was a mind control shooter, program shooter, and he helped me. But getting back to, if I can now, um, you, there People don't want to hear that someone's program. The reason I did it is you should know. Until the subject is addressed, um, nothing's going to be done about it. But Megyn Kelly was doing her program, and nothing against her. I don't mean that in, in this. 
But I was watching it this morning, and the reception she gets is of gratitude, and this is, you know, she is there, and it's saying Rockefeller Plaza, where she's sitting, her her studio is. The Rockefellers, the Illuminati, helped kidnap me, and I didn't find out until after I'd done the book, and I, after I was flown out, Mr. Flint's. The British told me. Uh, they told me about who my father is and about my kidnapping in 1941. And here I'm trying to tell people this part of it. And then I find out about my kidnapping. And people just don't want to hear it. Uh, I have usually put up, um, I, I put it away and then I get it out, photos, pictures, uh, et cetera, to prove uh, and and uh, Larry Flint and Hustler Magazine did an endorsement April of uh, 84, and he stated that I knew who was responsible for his shooting in uh, Gwinnett County, Lawrenceville in 78, etc., and he uh, uh, supported me in the campaign. But um, the difference, uh, he furnished me a car for a year, and then I literally have been on the street or begging or living on the Appalachian Trail because the government shut me down. People shut me down. They were told not to help me. Law enforcement did. Maybe they kept me alive in all this. It's such a horror story, but I sure paid a price to stay alive, which I'd rather be. But I'm not certain that was... they. It gets into law enforcement would... People didn't have to compromise themselves. It, they would tell people to do something, the, either to help me or to hurt me, and people would do it because the law enforcement got something on them or their children or their place of business like code violations that could, you get the drift. So they weren't, as far as they know, and they haven't yet ever paid for what they did to me were doing to me, and they didn't have to do it. They should. They didn't have to take a bribe, so to speak, from law enforcement uh, to do something to me, and they did. There was a few that were done in the good to help me, uh, and the charges were dropped, etc. But um, the reception I get is quite different from Megan Kelly's. She's sitting up there. And she's very well dressed. She's just had her hair done, I'm quite sure, in makeup and all this. Uh, dressed to perfection. And she is, uh, she, well, she was on Fox News for those years. So she's very well versed to going before the camera. And she's got the cameraman and all this working for her. I have nothing. I have lived homeless. I've lived in hell. I wonder where my children are. I haven't known if they're alive or dead in so many years. And um, I've been putting this up because people should know if their child, uh, they say behavior modification. This has nothing to do with a child or a person um, that's been programmed. They have lost the ability. It's been taken away to to do their wishes. And most people do not wish to go out and kill or to commit suicide. It looked like suicide, like Robin Williams, and this has probably gone off. And But my point is, with mind control, and I've put this up ever since I did the book, you can, it's the Tesla files that were stolen. They could create a illness, cancer, you name it, make you uh, place you under mind control program, make you go off into the river and drown, change your behavior from what you would really be like. Uh, so I guess I said that you can program people to shoot or take a knife or whatever they're programmed to do. It's the programmers. So um, now that Megan was on, let me see if this is going up. Yeah. Okay, Megan uh, had a gentleman on there, black gentleman, and he was a football player. And a girl really lied, and she was white, about him raping her. But the circumstances was that he ended up having to take a uh, plea deal, or, or he... 
he, he uh, in other words, would probably have been found guilty because of the evidence and whatever, uh, even though, you know. So he took a plea deal. And see, he had to serve time. Well, he was supposed to, but then I, I think it came out that he had to wear the leg bracelet and stay in. So he was incarcerated and allowed to stay at home. I think that was part of it. But anyway, he got the, uh, there are people that go in and try to help those who are illegally incarcerated, who did not commit the crime. So they did, um, they did, a thing was staged to where the girl that accused him, in any way, she admitted that uh, she had lied. But she had also got a settlement. They'd gone before a uh, civil court and got a settlement. So later she denied it and it Anyway, uh, he didn't do it, and I totally believe that myself from listening to it, of course, this morning. But my point is that this man, people were all happy for him, and they liked Megan Kelly. She presented this. She was well-versed, and, and uh, she's got cameras and lighting and an audience that loves her. And I sit here... And I've tried to tell, and I'm not going to go into it anymore. It's done no good. What's been done to me running place to place, uh, my life's been a living hell. That's all I can say. Every law in the book committed against me, and part of it is because that they won't tell it is because of the Illuminati took down my father and kidnapped me, brought me over here. I found out in late 83 about my kidnapping. And... Um, Nobody wants to hear that, that this country, uh, it gets into a mess, really, that this country did, and part of the people in my country, and part of my family, uh, they really don't want to hear it. It's like I'm insulting them, you know, how dare you? I'm the victim in this, and my children, my country, and my parents are the victims, and I tried to help you by telling you this because it was deliberately done in patterns, these were that I speak of, and uh, there's a long list of them. And you know what I've gotten out of it? Get the hell away from me. I don't want to hear it. I don't care what you went through. Um, I hope there's some films shown of... Uh, me living on the Appalachian Trail, people told not to help me, what I went through. And then when I got a little money and I tried to take a bath and get clothes, a few clothes, and drag my clothes into, let's take the Super 8 on Third Lane Road here. This is just one example. I've been left on the side of the road, and that's why I lived in a tent and went up on the Appalachian Trail and froze and starved. But no, none of the girls in there would help me trying to keep my few things I'd put together and lose them again because I'd have to be forced to leave, and I've told how they forced me to leave. So there was a point a few years ago where it got to where I was crawling to get, and pulling the suitcases and trash bags to get my things in the room. Nobody would help me. Nobody. 